Hi, yeah, happy Sunday. Welcome to another video of makeup and metaphors with me, Anya, here doing my signature look, which definitely is just to hide my double chin. I am um, today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite poets of all time, which is Seamus Heaney. And I'm just going to remind you to enter my fantastic 500 subscriber giveaway. Um, it's worth over £200. You've got some amazing bits of makeup in there. All you have to do is share it and tag three people in it. Uh, all of the rules are down below and all of the links in the bio. It's free makeup. Why not? And we're all learning. We're reading books. We're serving looks. The most important things in life. So I hope that you enjoyed today's video and I will see you in a second without any makeup. Right, well, let's dive straight into talking a little bit about the really super ultra famous poet that is Seamus Heaney. And of course, he wasn't only just a poet, he was also a playwright and a translator throughout his life as well. But I remember him as a poet. I remember covering his work when I was in secondary school. And I think that it was really his poetry that showed me that poetry could be super emotional. I remember the first time we ever covered midterm break when I was in secondary school in Lanesboro community college in rural Ireland and I remember how ultra emotional it was like with with my teacher my English teacher Mr McElgan reading out that poem and I remember like the whole class going silent as it kind of dawned on us what Heaney was talking about in the poem which was unfortunately the death of his younger brother Christopher but we'll get into that a little bit uh, later but so Seamus was a poet, a playwright, a translator, and he also was a winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature also. And when he won the prize, it was said that he won the prize for works of lyrical beauty and ethical depth, which exalt everyday miracles. So you can see that everything to do with what he said was beautiful and had deeper meaning behind it. Heaney was really a lover of all things normal and the everyday life and especially things to do with Ireland like for instance going to the bog or farming and things like that and as we delve into his life a little bit we'll see how maybe aspects of his upbringing then you know influence some of his poems. So when I was doing some research on Heaney I even bought a, a book which I think is called Stepping Stones it's downstairs now well done Anya but um just because I am fascinated by him. One thing that has been really beneficial from doing this uh, like little mini series is that it's reigniting the passion for the writers that I loved when I was originally realizing that I loved English and literature and poetry. So that's been lovely that I've kind of remembered that it was Heaney that originally got me into it. And eventually I'll go through eight as well. Look at this, half and half. <laughs> but there's there's literally no way that I could go through all of Heaney's life and his achievement, even his awards in like a, a 20 to 23 or 25 minute video, because I would literally just sit here listing off every single award that he's ever won or every single like honorary degree and honorary doctorate that he's ever achieved or every university that he's lectured in. So rather than just listing off um basically all of his accolades. I'm going to talk about things that I believe inspired his poetry, some of the most interesting things about his life, and also the very sad and tragic things that happened in his life as well. So Heaney was born on the 13th of April in 1939 in a place called Moss Bawn in Newbridge uh, near Castle Dawson in Northern Ireland. And one thing that I found particularly interesting was how adamant he was throughout his life to say that he was Irish and that he was not British and even though like he lived in somewhere that was considered to be in Northern Ireland um, he was Irish. So Heaney was the eldest of nine children, first born, obviously therefore first boy as well, to his father Patrick who was a farmer and a cattle dealer and his mum Kathleen and her family had worked in the uh, linen mills and Heaney believed that by having a father with kind of a traditional Celtic, very Irish background, such as farming and cattle trading, and with his mum, uh, or his mum's family and background being in a factory, that he kind of was able to see both ways of life between like the traditional Cel Celtic Gaelic way of life versus a life after the Industrial Revolution. And we can see this split in his life kind of throughout lots of things. So like, for instance, his father was very talkative, whereas his mum was very quiet. Also the divide between obviously the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, 
it, it just kind of represented this huge separation in his life and I suppose that's a struggle that he over that he had to overcome throughout his later life as well you know as a poet he believed that poets had this duty to kind of speak for those who couldn't and that they were responsible like somehow in, in the progression of the world but he also hated that so he kind of struggled with the fact that he was expected to comment on political and religious matters but he also wanted to be able to remain like kind of in the middle and not have to comment on things that are going on as well and not have to put himself in the line of like the proverbial crossfire. I'm using a, a pan of powder today because usually in all of my videos it looks like there's a million particles of dust just floating around the place because I use loose translucent powder but we're going to try and use a pan of powder today to try and not have all of the particles floating around. Heaney went to Anna Horish Primary School and ended up getting himself a scholarship to secondary. I believe it was called St. Columns College. And um, there he would study Irish and Latin for his languages. And you can see that this would have had quite an effect on his work. So um, he would use a lot of kind of Irish words and Irish colloquialisms. That can be our word of the day. Colloquialisms. I um, didn't learn that word until I became a teacher, so I'm not going to act like I'm over here on my high horse saying words like that every day but co a colloquialism is uh, like a a word that is associated with a certain region so like for instance when I'm teaching death of a naturalist uh, Heaney talks about the mammy frog and the daddy frog and my students laughed and they were like you know who calls their mum mammy I said well pretty much everyone in Ireland <laughs> I'm sure like 50 year old men still call their mum mammy in Ireland and other kind of colloquialisms but he, he has a lot of that in his poetry and I suppose that's why maybe Irish people feel so connected to it especially maybe Irish people who have emigrated who have left when you read his poetry it does kind of feel like almost a letter from home as well as this uh, St. Columns obviously you can probably tell by the name Saint was a Catholic school and as well if you if you follow his poetry or you read many of his poems you can see that there's also religious imagery there as well so maybe this is where like the inspiration for that came from. Obviously he's surrounded by um, Catholicism in school and then obviously with the troubles happening in the north of Ireland and in the Republic of Ireland. I'll take this time to say that um, maybe, maybe, not so much now that I've been in isolation, but since moving to the UK, I'm asked about once a week if I'm from the north of Ireland or I'm from the south of Ireland. And I say, well, I'm from neither. I'm from the Republic of Ireland because I'm not from the south of Ireland. I'm from the Midlands, which is smack bang in the middle. I know what people mean. They mean, am I from the north of Ireland or am I from the main island? But it's called the Republic. It's not called the south of Ireland. It's just called Ireland. Let's hit it with a spray. So unfortunately, if you've read Midterm Break, I'll pop it up on the board here. On the board, do you hear me? Maybe I'm having flashbacks to teaching in the classroom. I'll pop it up on the screen. And it is a devastating poem about funerals in Ireland. And unfortunately, obviously, Heaney's little brother, Christopher, died in a car traffic accident where he was hit by a car while he was a pupil at St. Columns. And if you go through the poem, I'll, I'll leave it up there so that you can see it. There's just this one line at the end of it. And I, I remember it, it being like, you know, somebody twisting a knife when we were reading the poem when we were younger, which was a four foot box, a foot for every year. So obviously his little brother Christopher died when he was four years old and was in a very small coffin. And I remember it was really, that was kind of my introduction to Heaney's poetry. Heaney went on to study language and literature in Queen's College in Belfast and he got a 1-1 there which is to be expected obviously he was a bit of a genius and there he kind of got to meet with other poets he joined kind of a poet society where he would get to meet other young poets that also went on to be hugely known and worldwide famous and it was at this group that he kind of got to talk about what it was like to live in such a divided separated Ireland and his emotions for it uh, when he was a, a teacher he was hugely or he went on to do teacher training, apologies. And he was hugely inspired by Ted Hughes, who is also on, um, I believe, the anthology. So it, it shows that it's all connected together. All of these people inspired each other and would have known each other. 
1963 then he went on to be a lecturer at St. Joseph's and then went on to marry his wife Marie or Mary Devlin whichever way you pronounce it in uh, 1965. So Death of a Naturalist was a volume of poetry and it went on to receive a number of awards and uh, let me see and after his volume um, Death of a Naturalist his two sons Michael and Christopher were born. As well, I can't really go into detail on all of the different places where Heaney lectured because he he was everywhere. He was in Dublin, he was in the north, and then he was in America, in California, in places like that. Um, but you can see that he was obviously very well travelled, very well received all over the world. And people loved his poetry and pupils loved meeting him. And one thing about him was like the depth of the warmth of his personality. And he eventually settled in the Republic of Ireland in, in Wicklow for a little bit. But then he was offered, I suppose, what would have been his dream job because he would have loved writing, but he also loved teaching. So he's kind of struggling like with the two, like how to do them both together. But he got offered this lecturing job in Harvard where he would only have to uh, lecture for a term. And then the other eight months of the year, he could do his own thing, which kind of ended up being the perfect job for him. In the late 80s, both of Heaney's parents passed away like in the space of two years, which he found to be very difficult as one would. And he really struggled with this grief and processing it. And this can be seen in his poetry from that time, the, the way that he was going through this grief and how it was affecting him. One really lovely thing that I, I saw about Heaney as well was his willingness to donate literally all of his notes. Like from his earlier years, he would donate them. From his later years, he would donate them. He even went on to donate his writing desk. And I was on YouTube a few days ago when I was researching some of this when I started. And I saw um, this like walking tour of um, a Heaney exhibition. And I saw his writing desk and it was like two old planks put on itchy nose, you know, staying on brand. And it was two old planks put across two filing cabinets. And the two old planks were taken from a school that he that he was lecturing in and they were just going to be dumped. So you could tell that he really had no airs about him. He wasn't like a snob. He, he wasn't on any sort of high horse at all. Just like his poetry loved to comment on the ordinary, it really looked as though he himself was just an ordinary man with just extraordinary talent. And just like Dickens, Heaney used to do these readings and he would be so well attended with these readings and again this really reminded me of Dickens people really wanted to go really wanted to see him that his fan base ended up being called Heaney Boppers like Teeny Boppers I thought that was hilarious because when you think about Heaney at least for me I forget how close to that past I am like to think that myself and Seamus Heaney lived in the same generation and even in the same country at the same time is a little bit mind-blowing to me because when you think of poets that have such like vast popularity and celebrity and huge reach like his legacy will live on indefinitely and his poems will be on exam schemes indefinitely as well to think that we lived within the same decades that he lived into the 2000s and even the like past the 2010s is is amazing. So when Heaney received the Nobel uh, Prize for Literature, I always nearly say the Nobel Peace Prize, but that's just because I suppose maybe that's the most well-known one. But when he received the Nobel Prize for Literature, he was on holidays in Greece with his wife and nobody could reach him. He didn't know until two days after it had actually been awarded to him. And when he eventually was kind of told and he flew back to Ireland, uh, a news crew asked him, what's it like to win an award that people like WB Yeats and George Bernard Shaw has won and he said that it was like being a foothill at the bottom of a mountain range and you just have to hope that you will live up to the expectations and again that just shows me how humble he was that he obviously didn't know how phenomenally talented maybe he was or he just didn't know the the vastness of his brilliance and then they went to where the president at the time, Mary Robinson, lived in Ireland, which is called the Oris. Well, it's called the Oris in Uthron, but it's it's like referred to as the Oris. And um, they celebrate it there. And he always referred to it as that N thing, like the Nobel Prize for Literature, almost like he was too embarrassed by, uh, by having won such a huge accolade, such a massive award. You know, he, he would never gloat about it, like calling it the N thing. One thing that I remember finding 
very relatable and interesting and modern about Heaney was when I was in secondary school or actually I think it was when I was in university and it was in my first poetry lecture and we did Lose Yourself by Eminem and I remember thinking wow how modern and cool to be studying rhythm like through a, a rap artist but in 2003 when Heaney was asked who like in modern times he was interested in like in poetic terms and in lyrical terms he said that the rapper Eminem he said because he takes you know he, he makes people realize what is possible so Heaney ended up having a stroke in um, 2003 so the same year that he said that and it just shows us he has a little bit of a sense of humor because you know when he was asked about it or when he was talking about it he said like blessed are the pacemakers after he just had a pacemaker installed then you know just to show his sassy side just before i i talk about you know the the end of his um his life he was uh, named as one of britain's top 300 intellects and he basically made them retract it because as i mentioned earlier Heaney considered himself irish he was not british so they ended up basically posting an apology and saying you know while Heaney is a fabulous intellect he is in fact not british he turned down uh, the laureate ship for the uk so i don't know if you know what like a, a poet laureate is but it's kind of like a, a representation it's a huge honor really but he turned down the, the laureate ship um in the uk because again he's not from the uk he's irish but i'll tell you what heaney said to the uk laureate ship after i do my lashes okay so lashes on just my go-to faithful demi wispy lashes up at the end in on the inside so i'm gonna read out what heaney said in return to being offered the uk laureate ship and that was don't be surprised if i demur for be advised my passport's green no glass of ours was ever raised to toast the queen oh the shade absolute shade heaney heaney died on the 30th of august at the age of 74 after he had a fall outside a restaurant up in dublin and uh he went to Black Rock Clinic and he was going to have a medical procedure in the morning, but unfortunately he actually passed uh, the night before, so he didn't get a chance to have the medical procedure. And his last words were in a text to his wife in Latin. And if it's not the most romantic, beautiful thing you've ever heard, then you're lying. <laughs> he sent her Noli Timer or Noli Timera which means do not be afraid. And apparently he sent that just moments before he, he passed. And I just think that that is so beautiful. Wow, this is what happens when I talk and apply liquid lipstick. Yeah, he fixed. So he sent that just moments before he passed to his wife. And that is the end of that. A little bit of a different makeup look today. No liquid liner, just kind of letting the lashes do the work for themselves. Um, but hopefully you learned something from this. Hopefully it'll inspire you to read some of Seamus's uh, poetry. They are beautiful. Um, if you're Irish, if you're not Irish, uh, it doesn't matter. They are just gorgeous. There's so many documentaries on YouTube about him, so many. Um, include, I'll, I'll link the walking tour of the museum that I watched uh, yesterday or the day before down in the bio below and also the book that I bought on him. The last thing I'm going to do is I have some questions that I have to answer that I left out. So a few videos ago, I started the YouTuber tag and I never finished it. So I'm just going to do five more questions right now. First one, what is your favorite app to edit your pictures? Definitely Facetune. If it's on Instagram or it's on my Facebook, it's been through Facetune. 100%. What is your goal for this year regarding YouTube? My goal for this year, I'd love to get to a thousand subscribers. I've already got to 500 and I'm having that huge giveaway. So I'd love to get to a thousand. Um, next, what influencers do you influencers do you watch? I watch Bailey Sarian and Ellen O'Neill, and that's basically it. I've gone through them. Oh, and I watched Soph. Um, it used to be Soph does nails and Soph does life. I, I think she's just Soph now. I watch Soph as well. She's great. Really wholesome content. 
Uh, besides makeup, what else are you passionate about? I'm passionate about music. I play the guitar and the piano and I sing and my whole family plays music and that's something that we do together and it means so much. Uh, what is one makeup trend that you dislike? I don't dislike any makeup trend. Makeup is not that serious. It's fun. It's art. Uh, it's there to express yourself, there to make you feel better. It definitely makes me feel better. It makes me feel more confident and I don't dislike anything about it. It's not that serious, you know? Right, I will see you next Sunday. Have a great week. Be safe. Enter my competition. <laughs>